Okay, last night I threw together this bin system. Um, I testified that I am the world's worst builder and I can make this so anybody can make it. Okay. Um, I just kind of bungee corded these front pieces on to show that they can go on. We'll take those off when we make the pile. This is going to be the home gardeners or the small micro farmers backyard version of a pause pile. If you notice there are pallets on the ground and those pallets have narrow slats, right? There's not a wide space between them. The reason for that is if they're narrow, they'll let air through, but all the stuff won't fall down and clog it, you know? And actually, Juan, would you do me a favor and take the um, big fork here? Oops, he's on the phone. Um, okay, well, we're gonna go get those canes over there and bring them over here. We're gonna put them on the bottom to be that kind of diffuser I talked about. I need you to do some stuff. <laughs> you grab the, um, the fork and just bring that, that pile of canes over. We're gonna put them on the very bottom. Thank you. So we're using the, it's, it's like the hog slat, not as quite as durable, and it's like the passive aeration in that you got some air is going to make up through those slots. So the back, this is a nice backyard version. I've even made them a little simpler where um, I just had poles here. I had that all wire mesh. So I had a post, 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 and I put boards across the front. Okay. So you get that. But, you know, the structure is important because you don't want it to fall over on you. Are these pallets? Pallets. Yeah. Okay, you yeah. did. Okay. Pallets. And by the way, I invited Andrew Lusk from Waste Stream Innovations. He has pallets and he probably sell them to you very cheap. And he's got a bunch that are nice and narrow too, you know. Waste Stream Innovations is on 191 just down the road a little what ways. What's it called? Waste Stream yeah, Innovations. Oh, yeah. Is that okay. the guy that makes the compost? Yes, he does. Yeah. So his has a lot of wood in it? He does put a lot of wood in it. If you use a lot of nitrogen, you can still make it work, you know. Like he kind of has to, but we're trying to help him figure out how to make some without, yeah. you know. Um, he's making good compost otherwise, but his, his need for aeration is causing him to put the wood in it. He screens a lot out, but there still is wood in it, you know. Uh -huh. Carbon nitrogen, basically if your carbon nitrogen ratio, and John's got a great little um, ex, you know, description of this somewhere, I know. I have it on my computer, if I can find it again. If it is, there's a graph, I think it is, isn't it? If a carbon nitrogen ratio is, is above 15 to 1, 15 parts of carbon to 1, Highs up nutrients for vegetables like crazy. So, you, and, it, and he actually, the one that I got from him was like 18 or something. Yeah. yeah. So you, you got to add the nutrients then. It does, it gets you all the microbes, it gets you all the soil conditioning. It's just, then you got to act more like a conventional grower as far as nutrients and keep pumping the nutrients in. Yeah. Um, but I, if you're doing landscaping or if you're willing to add nutrients, I highly recommend giving him the business. He's doing good work. Okay. So, and you could screen it. You can screen it and you put the woody stuff around your shrubs and trees and you use the fines for your well, garden. Well, coming through right here. You can screen with a, like a... That, that thing over there. Eighth inch um, hardware cloth. Oh, I'd go quarter inch probably. Quarter inch. Eighth inch. My gloves are in a lot of it wouldn't make, you know, a lot of it would just fall over the side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, this stuff here I'm not going to chop up. I want this to be kind of bulky and loose. When I'm turning the pile, when I run into this, I'm kind of done. You know, I'm going to have to get pull that out and, you know, shake the comp remaining compost off it, you know. Um, but the rest of the stuff, we'll chop it up so we can turn it. But this here is going to give us that nice diffuser so very little compost falls through, you know. This is definitely a home method, the uh, commercial um, growers would not want to have to get the last of their compost out of this mess. But the home grower could take this and kind of work the whole mess over into the next one and use it again. Yeah. Um, it's kind of doing, it's creating the same effect as having the air there. The air is coming in underneath. Now what's critical, what we have to pay attention to is we can't let the compost fall down into these slats and block where the air flows through. The compost cannot fall over the edge, so the air cannot come underneath. Does everybody understand that? It needs to come underneath, right? So this now is a, a very good home diffuser. All right? So now, remember I said we couldn't use these stalks? Can somebody hand me that spade that John was trying to dig down to China with over there? This is in the bin? This one? Yeah, that's it, yeah. I got it. I got it. What we want to do with this, 
Yes. I like to put them in a wheelbarrow, actually, because then they're more cracked. It's easier to chop them. But everybody has a shot at that. It's not hard when they're nice and brittle to chop them up. Isn't it redundant to do this when you already have this air? Stuff? No, because that'll clog. Stuff will fall down and block those holes. All right. It's actually best practice. All right. You might get away without it, but this is way better. Okay. You know, um, it's just we're gonna put kind of all kinds of fine all right, stuff I just on. Yeah. Have. Right. No, I have tried it both ways. It's a good question. You know, if you had some screen over that, then you wouldn't need this, you know? Okay. You could do that, you know? I tend to always have this kind of stuff around, and what, what happens to me is I run it on the floor a few times, and then it's rotted enough to break up and put in the pile. And then I, you know, I've gotten rid of my canes, you know? Those are raspberry canes. Well, I guess I asked that question because this stuff is sort of like that, but this will break down. And this will hold it. That will actually break down. That's only one year growth that will break down too. Okay. It'll take a little longer, you know. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to go on next, you know. I actually want quite a little. This is, if you see, when I put this on, it's even more of a diffuser. So air can really move well up through it, you know. Okay. Um, and a lot of this stuff would fall through too. Or lodge in, like, you know, I could put a piece, this could land, you know, a piece this size could land right, right like this and block a lot of that hole. Now that can't happen because of this, you know. Um, but you know what? You might figure out how to do it so you don't use that piece at all. This is definitely just half battles way to make a home compost, you know. And I'm sure, you know, like that woman who used twigs, I'd never use twigs because they won't rot, but she figured out how to get them back out and she made great compost, you know. Martin Webster, he's taught composting classes. His system's totally different, but he makes great compost, you know. Um, this is a system that works. I taught a class um, for Mainland Community College at the Dig In Garden for the Hungry Community Garden in Burnsville. We made a pile like this end of November. We had enough manure, the right ingredients, enough uh, stocky material. Third week of December, it was still over 130. You know, it died eventually. You know, sometime before before um, the New Year, went down, and then came back up to about 75 the next spring. But it got the heating we needed to assure weed kill. You know. Okay, so then I chopped it up. Maybe I'll try and break them through the blocking. I didn't chop them well enough. I don't want them much bigger than that, you know? Pardon? No, that's enough for this one. We'll use it in the next one, which we probably won't do today. Yeah. And then the next thing I'm going to throw on, by the way, is going to be that hot manure. You know? And that's going to kind of press, press this all down, you know? And the air will be able to get to it, and that manure has a lot of corn stalks, so it'll cook good too. So what if, as a home gardener, you don't have manure? Um, I wouldn't buy it. Find, you can find other things. Coffee grounds. That's what I want to Get your neighbors to save your food waste, their food waste. Yeah, okay. But make it hot. Yeah. Make it hot. Don't do it unless it's going to be hot, or you'll be making a rat hotel or a rat restaurant. Uh -oh. You know? So get it to where it get hot and to run, you know? That's the key. Yeah, that, and that's the thing you gotta commit uh, to putting the time in if you're gonna make a hot pile for yourself. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just a feeding station. And I live near Baltimore. Hey, come teach us this backyard composting it. And I did it, you know, I talked to some people, but I, I, I mostly wouldn't do it because what happens is you get all these people excited and they build, you know, they spend a lot of time really build a nice pile and he heats up once and they kind of let it go and then that first round of compost maybe was pretty good the next time out it's like yeah just keep throwing the food in and what happens when you just keep throwing the food in you're restarting it and over time I'm gonna you're training right over. the rodents of the area sorry yeah. when the food comes in you're reading map you're reading yeah. Map. Yeah. Yeah. i know you can have it back we're gonna make it easier and, uh, and, and what happens is you first okay. end up with some mice we are still taking it out of the fork. But then you get rats, right? Yeah. Then you're not putting so much food in one day. They still come. Where's the rest of the food? It's in your house. So now they start to move into the basement. And that's happened to a lot. Of, like well, I, I talked to somebody. I basement, but I got a lot of black snakes. Yeah, that's because they were eating the rats. Yeah, but yeah. what I said was I had some netting for the blueberry shrubs on oh, the ground. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, I, I don't want to go any further. Yeah, no. hurt my heart. Try and keep your, your black netting oh, off the ground it's because it's snake, it's, snake, it's snake torture. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so Juan's going to bring us some manure, and that will be a little faster. Um, all right, another, another nitrogen source. Somehow this always comes up. 
I don't recommend it at all if you're selling to the public, not because of safety, but because of the foodie factor, because of our culture. But a great source for the home gardener for nitrogen? Peace. 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 Yeah. And what I often would do, um, and I actually did certify. When I first went organic, when I, before I realized, oh, I can't use pigs, it's going to freak out the, um, and if it freaks out my certifier, it's going to freak everybody else out, so I stopped <laughs> doing it, right? But they approved it, because they, they knew I'd gotten the pile hot and then it sat for six months. There's no way, except for a year, there's no way any, any um, packages left after that process. Um, but what I would do, often do is take these stocky material and brown material and soak that in the urine. Then I'd fork that in, and then the nitrogen will come back out in the, in the water, in the, with the water, but then there's also some left in there to help that. It's a good way to carry it in. Yeah. Um, you going to just jump over the top? Um, I don't think. He'll, he'll bring it over the top and I'll scoop it in. He won't be able to control how much it is, you know? But I'll take that fork and scoop it in. Other sources of nitrogen, if you um, have neighbors, get them to save the food waste, you know? Um, if there's restaurants that do a lot of salads, try to get their, their salad waste. That won't attract a lot of uh, pests. Give you a big nitrogen bump. Very wet. Remember, the compost, compost and food waste is 80% water. So you're really gonna, your water is going to shift a real lot when the food waste starts to break down. It's very wet. So you're just going to hold it up and get it. Yeah. Pull it down with it. That's good. Check it down. Tip it down, but not so it jumps out. Yeah. Try to tip it down, but. Overdo it though. We're almost there now. Now we just want to get a little bit and move it back into the bit. That's it, Juan. You're good. Bye. Thank you. Go ahead and turn it off until we need it again. Leave it right there. We're going to use it again. <laughs>